Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another Java tutorial. In this video, I'm going to help you understand what the Java map is, as well as the hash map. But first, if you're new here, my name is Alex. On this channel, I post a Java tutorial just like this one all the time. Also, if you want to get a job in tech, I have $1,000 off the Springboard coding boot camps. They're really great. Check out my full review and all that information in the link in the description. Let's first start learning about maps by going to File, New, Java Project. We'll call this something like Maps are Fun. Hit Finish. And then in the source folder, go to new class. We'll call this something like cool maps. Hit public static void main checkbox and hit finish. All a map is is an object that lets you store data with keys and values. So let's start with an example. Let's make a map of basketball players. Let's have a number, which is an integer, and then a string, which will be the name of the player. We'll call this Lakers. I looked up some Lakers players because uh, I know nothing about basketball. We'll say equals new hash map. Don't worry, I'm going to explain everything here in a second so you know everything. We'll have that integer for the jersey number and then the string for the name. Finish it off with parentheses semicolon. Now this is a lot, uh, but it's super easy. Okay, let's expand this a little so you can see everything. We get red underlines because we need to actually import the map so we can use that code and import the hash map as well. Let's use this. Let's start getting to the keys and values because that's what a map is all about. Let's put some players into our map. All we have to do is type the name of it, dot put. Here you can see that we can put our integer as the first argument in the parentheses and then a string as the second. So we'll do that. Six is LeBron James. I'm gonna look really dumb if none of these are correct. But I think they are 0, Shaquille Harrison, and 14, Scotty Pippen Jr. If we print out our map, we'll just go system.out.println Lakers. If we do that, then we get this format. Pretty interesting. So we have 0 equals Shaquille Harrison, 6 equals LeBron James, 14 equals Scotty Pippen Jr. These are the keys and values we were talking about. Keys and values makes a map a map, which is different than any other data structure like an ArrayList. ArrayList doesn't have keys and values. But if you see map and hash map, know it has a key as the very first one and a value as the second one. This lets us manipulate and update the data a little easier. So say, for example, if we want to remove Shaquille Harrison, say his contract ended or whatever, we can do that like this, type the name of it, dot remove we can remove an element by its key remember the key is the first one the value is the second one you can remember that by uh, alphabetical order k is before v so we can remove whoever's key is zero and then when we print it we only get lebron james and scotty pippen because shaquille harrison is removed from this line if we want to remove all of them you can do dot clear, for example, save and run, and it's empty now. So now I'll go over this line by line and go through some more examples. The high level is that we're creating a map object. It's just an object, just like any other object in Java. We're naming it Lakers. We're setting it up so that the key is an integer and the string is a value. Uh, we're adding things to it or clearing it, and then we're printing it out. This is a data structure. But first, when we click the green run button, we run code inside of the main method. The first line we see here is map. These little alligator uh, brackets with these two right here tell the map which is the key and which is the value. In this example, we're having an integer as the key because we're going to do the jersey number, which is an integer, and a string, which is the name, as the second one. These could be anything. It could be integer, integer. Uh, it could be string, integer. It could be double float, I think. Anyways, once that's set up, we name it Lakers. We're naming it Lakers because that describes the data we're putting in. Equals new hash map, just like any other object. Now we put hash map here because hash map is, it's a version of a map that we can use. It has a slightly different implementation than a regular map, but most of the time you'll use hash map because it has a lot of neat uh, things you can do with it. So we say equals new hash map, and then the integer and string match up to how we set it up at the beginning. And then the parentheses here is just like any other object creation. You have the parentheses at the end to call its constructor, which makes the object. So that was a lot going on in the first line, but all it's doing is making a map called Lakers. Next, 
we did Lakers dot. And when you bring up dot, it shows you all of the methods that the map can do. And there's so much we can do here. And that's why it exists in the first place is because you can manipulate data super easily with these methods. So first we're putting in uh, three values. So we use the dot put method to do that. We put the key six with the corresponding value LeBron James. And then we do that same thing for the next two. So now Lakers has three elements inside of its map, but the next line is Lakers.clear, which removes all of them. And so that's why at the last statement, when we print out Lakers, it's empty. So let's do a few more things here. Say I wanted to join the Lakers. What we could do is do Lakers.replace. We could replace, uh, let's say replace LeBron James. Sorry, LeBron, I'm joining now. I don't think the Lakers would be very happy, very happy about that, but say we wanted to do that. Then now you'll see that it updated and now I'm number six, Alex Lee. You could also do cool things like, see, if you ever get confused about maps or any object in Java, just type the name of the object you created and do dot. And then your IDE will bring up all the methods you can do. And you could just kind of see like what you might need. So for example, uh, contains key. If the Lakers contains key um, 14, then that will return true or false. And if we run this, we'll see true because it does return or it does contain a value with the key 14. If this was one, we would get false. You could also do contains value. If this has Shaquille Harrison, and you get the idea. False because I spelled it wrong. Boom. If you want to get all the keys and values, you can do that like this for map.entry. We can call this like M for each entry in the Lakers map, which is also called the entry set. This entry set lets us loop through the individual elements. We can print out each key and value by doing get. So we can do m.get key, maybe add a space, and then m.get value. This, we need a plus sign here, save and run. And now you have access to all of those keys and values. If you wanna loop through them and do something with a certain key, say for all the keys that are less than 10, you wanna do something different with them. You now have that variable returned back from get key and the same for get value. So again, maps are helpful if you wanna search, update, or delete elements that are based off a key and a value. This is cool in the real world because say you have like a list of a thousand movies, you could map one movie to a specific ID, which would be the key. We use keys a lot in databases for the software that I'm testing at my current job. So maps are very helpful. So I wanna keep it high level right here. If you ever get stuck, do the name dots and look at all the methods and see which one might help you. A quick Google search on one of the methods could help or you could rewatch how I used some of the methods earlier. Thank you. I hope this helped you. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.